Well, since we're talking about the CCP, let's let's do your your, your bit before we uh, finish off. Yeah, yeah, try and be fast because yeah, there's a lot. But um, so what happened is uh, a couple of days ago it got released, uh, which is a full list of CCP members in Shanghai. So the Communist Party of China has ninety odd million members, huge country, but Shanghai has about uh, two million from what this leak shows. And it has their names, their IDs, their date of birth, their education, their hometown, their party position, the ethnicity of each of them. And of course, the, this this wouldn't be news if it's just people working in China. Because yeah. it's like, oh, you're a Chinese Communist Party member in China working for the Chinese government. No one cares. So the only way to get ahead. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, a lot of people will be joining because of uh, career prospects or to get yeah, yeah. favorable situations yeah. with the government. So it's it's not necessarily that all these people are communists either, which we should make before we. Yeah, go yeah. On. The, 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 this was just the case through all of the totalitarian regimes of the twentieth century. Like, if you if you wanted to become successful, you'd join the fascist party or the communist party, whichever the dictatorship was. You know, the one party. Uh, you'd join it, and you may not be in your own life particularly political. You may not have any convictions either way. But uh, <clears throat> if you wanted to get anywhere, you had no choice. Yeah. So this information was apparently hacked in 2016 and then was handed over to the security services. And then um, in September this year, it was handed over to uh, specific media outlets to take a look at for a couple of months before they released it to the public. And the reason they wanted to do that is they wanted to find out where these guys are abroad. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, if you work in China, no one cares. But if you're a communist, uh, communist Party member of China, but working in, let's say, a military industry in the UK, that's quite worrying. Yeah. So... The a bunch of news uh, outlets got a look at this, and they've reported that yes, they have found a bunch of foreigners working places where they shouldn't be. So the the obvious fallout is right. Did the companies know? Did the governments know? And if they did, that's bad. Like, yeah. You should have fired them immediately. And now that you do know, what are you going to do about it? Because yeah. you have to get rid of them if it's a sensitive field. Oh well, yeah. So so what what sort of companies are we talking about here? So that's the thing. If we can go to the uh, the Daily Mail article, they list a whole bunch of them. So the, the first one that's very concerning because there's some in Australia, some in the United States, but we're going to focus on Britain a little bit because it's yeah. uh, a little bit larger and also because it's where we live. So there was one senior official in the British consulate in Shanghai who was on the list. Right. So he's a member of the Communist Party and he's working in the British consulate. Right. And okay, you could argue he's in China, therefore maybe it's sure. reasonable. No, because MI6 are literally one floor above him. <laughs> so he, he <laughs> right. would be able to identify members of MI6 working right. in China. Yeah. So no, not, not only that, like, you know, he may he may try to plant bugs or something. Who knows, you know, spy work. All sorts of things. So yeah. massive, massive security risk. So yeah. the, the, the the British need to get rid of him immediately, surely. So this, this is also a thing where it's like, well, he's a member. It's not necessarily evidence of him being a spy. It's just... Eh, he certainly got the opportunity and yeah. a little bit of a motive here, doesn't he? Yes. So 30, in, in response to finding this out, 30 MPs have tabled an urgent question to the parliament asking how, how did this happen <laughs> and what are we doing about it, which should be out, I assume, tomorrow or later this this day. I've looked at the agenda. It's not on there yet, but right. the parliament takes time. So the, the Daily Mail wrote to the Foreign Office to ask, well, how did, you know, how did this happen? Yeah. What are you doing about it? And the Foreign Office insists that they have robust procedures to vet staff Okay, clearly not that robust. Yeah. But they were aware that they employ party members. So it's like, hang on, but you knew. You knew that this guy was on the list. And what, I mean, why is that something that they can just say and then move on from? I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming the MPs will bring this up in the in the parliament saying, why on earth is the foreign office hiring communist party members to work in our consulate <laughs> next to our security services and just thinks this is fine? Because it's obviously not fine. Yeah. No, that's 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 ridiculous. Yeah, so that's that's the the governmental part of this. Um, but there's the well, there's one other guy in, in a semi-governmental because there's there's a guy who works in. Is he on a Quango? No, he works at a British university dealing with aerospace technology. Right. And aerospace technology is considered militarily sensitive because it is. So the the obvious point is why are we employing a hostile, potentially foreign agent in yeah. a in a military capacity, which. I mean, it's a really good question. It's... Yeah, they they wrote to the university and to him. Neither of them have responded, so right. I can't say any more about that. Okay, but the the private industry is is funnier. So uh, they list here that the people they were able to identify who are party members and working in UK industry included um, working for Pfizer and AstraZeneca, both of them involved in the coronavirus vaccine. Yeah, yeah. 
So they collectively hired 123 party loyalists, is how the, uh, the mail is reporting it. So they've got 123 party members working in those two companies, which... Uh, well, that's ridiculous. Like, uh, as a private company that has uh, presumably patents on all of these things and yep. is concerned about their own intellectual property, China isn't China like the number one... Like, uh, Patent thief. Yeah, yeah, th- th- thief of intellectual property. I, I think, yes, I think Russia's just behind them. But <laughs> Surely it's probably just the scale of each one, isn't it? You know, there are just more it's just people. China's yeah. doing it a lot more. Yeah, which... um, but, but yeah, so as a private institution that had... Uh, a particular concern in this regard. You would think that many of them would be like, well, we don't want Communist Party loyalists stealing our information. You, you'd think so. Um, so it gets worse. They, they also contracted <laughs> that they, they'd found out that members, you know, literally hundreds, as they say, were working in Airbus, Boeing and Rolls-Royce. Okay, all of them get contracts for the British government to make yeah. military yeah. technology. You know, making planes, Rolls-Royce yeah, making yeah. engines. You know, the kind of secrets that these companies desperately want to keep secret because they are very good at them and they don't want other people with the technology. Yeah, but Ch- China obviously has a direct interest in acquiring this information. I mean, the the famous uh, joke was that well, only a few years ago that China made was was able to actually manufacture ballpoint pens. Did well, you see is that true? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in like two thousand and six or something. Uh, they, 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 there was a you know a, a, a bunch of articles being like, oh, breakthrough! China can now manufacture ballpoint pens because. It was a kind of technology they just didn't have access to, yeah. apparently. Well, you know, 1990, it was still a third world nation. So Exactly. You know, so so they, they need to catch up. They need to catch up quickly. And I would suggest that the if uh, D, uh, D. Dong Sheng is anyone to go by, uh, the Chinese Communist Party appears to be filled with people totally without scruples. Who's and D. He, Dong Sheng? He was the, the Chinese professor from Beijing, uh, Communist Party loyalist, who was tasked with going over to America and getting the bookstore uh, opened up. Yes, I remember now. Uh, who said, "Oh, you're you're good at fooling the foreigners. You go and do it, D." And he was like, "Little D." And he was like, "Oh, okay. And then I'll go fool the foreigners. Here's a stack of cash. That not enough? Here's two. You know, he's like, well, maybe that's not enough. You know, <laughs> but, but, that's but, our last episode, I think. So yeah, go check that out. <laughs> but, but the it, po- the point is, like the the, com- the Chinese Communist Party is not exactly a party of of upstanding, honest citizens. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Um. So you would think these private companies would have at least, you know, thank you for telling us we're going to do something about this. Uh, no. The, the, the mail wrote to them and the responses universally were that they do not bar communists from having positions in their, in their companies. <laughs> well, which I, okay, I maybe mean... Maybe you should think about it. That's, that's... I do. <laughs> up to you. But they, they obviously recognize that this is a, <laughs> is, a, is a security concern because their response was, we have measures in place to protect data. I hope you do. But if you're employing the member of the Communist Party to make sure that that data is secure, I'm not sure how secure that data is. Well, the the member of the Chinese Communist Party will certainly tell you the data is secure. Yeah, which... Good news. You've got nothing to worry about. Again, it might just be a guy who's joined for career reasons or whatever. He's moved to the UK and he's not got a job. And I understand that this is unfair on the guy, but... But this this is a very charitable interpretation because another another yeah. way of interpreting this is do you think that the Chinese Communist Party is unaware of its own members that go and work overseas? No, of course not. Of course not, right? They're going to have a fairly tight lead on these people. They're going to be... Okay. They, 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 I think they are. I think, I think uh, like they're going to be paying close attention. Okay, yeah. They might not be in contact, but they'll be paying attention. Yeah, they might not be directly puppeteering them or something, but like they they, and but the thing is these people then know that the Chinese Communist Party knows about them and is going to be thinking about them, especially as they are members of this party. And so like even if they're doing it for personal advancement rather than ideological commitment, um I mean, I would be worried about them watching over my shoulder, basically, if I were one of these people overseas. And I think that's a valid concern. Yeah. So basically our 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 security services and our aerospace services are definitely at risk. Compromised by the compromised, Chinese yep. Communist Party. And right. when we talk about the, the companies, the private companies that sell us equipment for our defense, they're also compromised. And okay. at least the government was upset. Like, the private companies just don't seem to care, which is... Well, you say that, but Boris nearly bloody sold all of our infrastructure to Huawei. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying the government's perfect, but at least they, there was outcry about this. Like the MPs are going to have an urgent question yeah. and demand that the foreign office explain themselves. And if so. it wasn't for Trump, he would have done. It was pressure from Trump that made them stop doing it. So it's just like, okay, yep. Like 
Uh, I guess I guess that Western governments and companies have just not really thought about what's been going on. So to, to give the the opposition point of view, the they wrote to the uh, professor for Oriental and African Studies at the University of London to right. explain why everything was. And Di Dong Shang said, <laughs> he's a he's a, he's an English guy, so <laughs> okay. But it, it it'll come clear the kind of guy he is. Go on. Um, so his quote in response was, "It's not likely that many members in China actually believe or care about communism." Perfectly true. I agree. So it's largely a nation-building project, not an ideological one. The oh, Communist wonderful. Party, which no, that's an ideological one. Well, even then, if you if you, you know, if it was a nationalist project, that would still be ideological. Yeah. So, but so, it, I mean, at least it would hint that China has fully morphed into a sort of fascist mode now. So, in response to the idea that we need to get rid of these people yeah. from these departments, his response was, "That's just one of the many reasons that the MacArthurist catch-all approach doesn't make sense." even from the fact that it would be a gross abuse of people's human rights. It's like... Your human rights to be employed you, by the government? What? You don't have rights to work in sensitive areas. Yeah. You, like, what human rights are we talking about here? I, I just... I, I don't understand how... He, like, I get a his human point. right is anything that's in the front of my mind at any time when I'm speaking, right? This is the leftist view. So whatever, exactly. whatever, whatever the, sounds bad is a human right being violated. It's my human right to work at Boeing or Rolls-Royce and be in contact with these you know, trade secrets that, that, yes, the Communist Chinese Party would be interested in having, uh, but I'm not taking them, I promise. It's just my human right to... No, nonsense. Absolutely nonsense. It's, it's an obvious appeal to, like, human rights. Come on. <laughs> like, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't care about my, my human rights to this sensitive information? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I, I bet we could find a socialist right. arguing that. Oh, doubtless, so, doubtless. No, because it would save lives. Therefore, it's a human. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Anyway, so the, the the obvious point is, no. This this happens all the time. There are reasons for these things being in place that we do not hire foreign, uh, possible foreign agents. Yeah. Because that's the thing. It's not proven that they're agents just by being members, but that's that's enough to make people suspect. Dude, I I, I probably wouldn't allow Chinese Communist Party members in my country. If I were the government. But no, but why would you? Why would you? You know that this is a nefarious party, the, the tyrannical totalitarian dictatorship of China. Well, we, we actually... Why would you let them in? We only do a lot of this as the UK. I wouldn't let Nazi party members in. Yeah, we, we ban people who come from extremist parties in Pakistan, for example, yeah. from coming to the UK because they're extremists. We don't let members of... Uh, like UK citizens who joined ISIS come back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we might. We, we, we don't let UK citizens who are libertarians into this country. Sorry, well, Canadian that's, citizens. That's so. true. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but 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 but, that's but the we're point. able to be very yeah. nanny state about certain things that may harm the population. But when it comes to foreign agents, eh, no, okay, we'll just, I don't see why we wouldn't stop foreign agents. Which we'll, uh, we'll get into the, the Americans. Agents. Well, Trump has done something about this. It's not the Americans. It's literally, the only person on earth who's actually going to do anything about anything. Apparently, yeah. Anyone with any good yeah, foreign go policy, on, it's always Trump. So this this is just to make the point that this happens all the time. So yeah. this is uh, a report from the Department of De Department of Justice that they arrested a Harvard professor and two other and they tried to arrest two other guys. They only got one of them. And but, this was twenty eighth of January twenty twenty. So this year. Yeah, very 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 recent. Um, so the first one is the professor, and he was uh, he's be he's being charged with a count of making a false statement to the Department of Defense. So they gave him a grant for fifteen million dollars to carry out research. And of course, to get a Department of Defense grant for research, especially that large, you can't have associations with foreign enemies. So they asked him, do you have any connection with foreign countries? Are you a member of the CCP? And yeah, he said no. Said, he said no. He, he didn't say that he had any links with them. Well which, done, Di Dongsheng. Which is, <laughs> You're in. is a complete lie, because at the time, he was working with the Thousand Talents Plan, which the American <laughs> government is saying is just a front to steal information. Right. So you have, you have people come over with their research and they just, just take it. Yeah. Then you get rewarded by the party. Yeah. Seems like a front to me, but I mean, yeah. So he was getting paid fifty thousand dollars a month in expenses to be part of this program for the CCP. That's a lot of money for someone. A staggering amount. So money. he must be very useful for them that's, to pay him that that's much. That's Hunter Biden on Burisma levels of money. <laughs> I don't know if it's Hunter Biden money, but no, he literally got fifty grand a month. Did he get 50 grand a, a month? As a yeah, Burisma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, guy, this guy's worth as much as Hunter Biden. There we are. Yeah. So he, he was getting given that much for housing and expenses. I don't know what kind of life he was living for 50 well, You can grand see a month. why people do it for that sort of money, can't you? How do you even spend 50 grand a month? You don't. You, you sit there and accumulate it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the, the DOD said, well, this, this guy's clearly some kind of agent. We're arresting him and they're going to charge him with espionage and all the rest of it. Right. So the, the second guy uh, tried to get a student visa, which they're charging him with lying because yep. he was a lieutenant in the, in the People's Liberation Army whilst working at university. And it said that whilst at university, he continued getting assignments from the People's Liberation Army, 
and they were to evaluate U.S. security services, uh, U.S. defense websites, and also kept sending documents back to the Chinese. So literally spying and funneling documents back. Yeah, so they, right. they tried to arrest him. He's currently in China, so they're not going to get him, yeah. which is a shame. And then the third guy they did get, literally on the plane as he was trying to leave, um, he was accused of uh, stealing research because he was found on the plane with 21 vials of biological research. <laughs> and it was like, you're not meant to have this. Why are you taking this back to China? So they've arrested him and charged him with espionage and all the rest of it. Yeah. So. Okay, so that's that's. And there were a bunch of. Are these the students that got deported as well, or uh, is that something separate? These are professors. Though <clears throat> yeah, I, I didn't have time for the students because we just there's yeah. so many. I've got Because there were a bunch of Chinese students as well who got yep. deported for espionage. I mean, the middle one was technically a student, even yeah. though he was a me member of the army. But the yeah. the next one's just another example because we don't have time for a million of these. So just yeah, to, okay. to give the to give the point, this guy was actually charged and find, found guilty. So it's not just a charge. This guy has been convicted. Um, so he's the University of Southern California, and he was convicted of economic espionage and trade secret theft. So he was stealing information about radio filter technology, <coughs> and they right. caught him, they tried him, they okay. found him guilty, and sure. that's another spy. It's like this goes on all the time. I'm not saying that just because you remember means you are a spy, but this is why we don't have them in sensitive areas. Yeah. You know, perfectly reasonable thing to do. If you're a member of the Chinese Communist Party, why would we want that? Yep, so the Trump actually did something about this. So the the next clip is uh, China <clears throat> being upset because mm -hmm. the, the US government decided that if you are a member of the Communist Party, we're not going to give you a long visa, at least. We're only going to give you a tourist visa for a month. Right. So you can come here and be a tourist. And the Chinese are claiming that this is some kind of prejudice against Chinese people, which... <laughs> it's such a weak argument, but it's it's such a Isn't transparent... Isn't kicking black people out of the country prejudicing against black people, China? But that's the thing. It's an appeal to Western morality. Is it, yeah, is is it prejudice to persecute and exterminate the Uyghurs, China? What yeah, about if you, the Tibetans? If you can get the, the full title up there, if you can scroll up a little bit more, just to show, yeah. China claims prejudice as <laughs> US shortened visas. The most prejudiced country on Earth claims other people are prejudiced. <laughs> Their argument is, well, we know prejudice when we see it. <laughs> see? Yeah, it's like they're experts. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're experts on prejudice. But I'm assuming this is to, to try and counter things like the, the, the next story, which has, has come up a lot, which is the, the <laughs> spy that loved him, which is uh, this, this US senator who was having sexual relations with this lady who was a Chinese spy. Yeah. Um, why? Like, why are you in bed with a Chinese spy? So I'm assuming this is... If For you the are, same reason that Joe Biden takes money from China. Yeah. So this this is the sort of thing where, you know, if we keep a Chinese spy, you know, a member of the Communist Party in here, we don't want them here for very long because there are too many of them are spies. It's not all of them. Hashtag not all. But too many. <laughs> but uh, they, they, they will go and start relationships with all of your senators and various... Uh, and, and they'll steal lots of information and then the president will actually have to take action against them. Yeah. So the, there's, there's one argument for not doing this that I think actually needs to have a, a fair hearing okay. just so we can finish up. So this is a, a story from the BBC talking about this guy who came to the United States as a Chinese national when the nationalist government was in charge of China. And of course, there was no suspicions about him because the nationalists were allies of yeah. the United States, at least in name. So he was allowed to work in sensitive areas and he was allowed to work on the Manhattan Project and also the Jet Propulsion Lab. So he was... I, I'm not sure how key he was, but he was involved in this. And then he was accused of attending a Communist Party meeting in the US under the Red Scare. And of course, this meant that, no, we're not going to keep you working on these projects. Mm -hmm. So they then put him under house arrest for five years and then exchanged him for some US pilots to send him back to China. Right. And the argument that this is why we shouldn't kick people out is he then went back to China and participated in the two bombs, one satellite campaign in which he developed the atom bomb for them, the hydrogen bomb, and then the first satellite. Right. So we kicked this guy out. Well, the US kicked this guy out. And then he was able to develop technology for China. Right. Well, instead of staying here for the for the US. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, that's that's a fair criticism. But that's not going to be most cases. That, you know, if you can find the, oh, well, here's one case where it actually would have been more sensible to allow this guy to stay in the United States. Well, okay, let, let, let's say that that represents every case. I'm not saying we have to deport every member of the Chinese Communist Party. I'm saying don't give them access to the secret files. 